Hello! So this is, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure, everything you need to build the one, two, 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 yeah that's right, oscillator. And this is the one that I've been taking on tour and there's, I don't know how many videos I'm putting up today on this, but there's one on the proper channel. And this is just a little bit more about, you know, if you plan on building it and stuff. Start up at the top and we'll just uh, work our way down, shall we? So here is the selection of different resistors. Uh, yeah, I probably could have got away with this 1K8 actually being a 2K. You probably can, you probably can get away with it. Like if, if, if you don't have these exact things, some of them mean uh, more than others. Um, off the top of my head right now, the only ones that need to be quite exact we'll get to in a minute. I'm not gonna explain what these exactly do because it's hard to see in this context because you know, if I'm saying this is to kind of add a bit of power filtering for the Arduino Nano or stuff, it doesn't really, you know, make sense, but that's actually what that one's doing. <laughs> so this is all the resistors. These are metal film resistors. As you can see, it doesn't really matter because when I was going through all of the resistors I have, you'll notice there's a dud. The 1M5 over here is actually a carbon resistor, maybe? Yeah, so that one's a different one. So it doesn't actually really matter that much. And it doesn't really matter which ones. You can get the ones that are even slightly smaller than this. These are quarter watt resistors. It's what I tend to use, and I usually buy these at either at 100 at a time, and they cost about two pounds, or a thousand at a time, and that's like eight pounds. But, you know, if you're not, if you're only starting and you're only getting a handful, if I was you, I'd probably buy a selection box which kind of gives you a ground of lots of resistors that you already have and then you realize what you don't have and you then you're not stuck kind of buying every single one. Just look at selection boxes of metal film um, resistors. Make sure they're, you know, quarter watt because the quarter watt... The, I've, it's sometimes, when I started, I actually bought the ones that were 0 0.6 watt rating and they were a lot bigger and you're probably going to make a mistake and to be honest those bigger ones are fine and if you can fit them in the PCB board it doesn't really matter. We've got these ones which are the ceramic capacitors likewise if you've got some different type of capacitor laying around as long as they're not um, polar capacitors like electrolytic capacitors these have two separate uh, you know they have they have to be in the right way round these can be either way around and these are unipolar, bipolar, uh, but yeah, it could be anything, but preferably these ones. Uh, to be honest, you could even skip these ones. These are just like decoupling capacitors. And, I, and sometimes, I've got to be honest, when I'm being lazy, I've done, some of these, I don't even bother putting in. Those aren't my decoupling capacitors, they're in here actually. And we'll have a look at it in a minute. <laughs> but I mean, you know, a lot of people say every single one matters, but you know, the, these are just, some of them you can miss out. I mean, I'm not gonna say which because you know, you're going to get emails, I'm going to get emails being like, oh, it doesn't work, it's like, oh, well, you missed out the important one. <laughs> There's some uh, three times tenure capacitors. These are just um, power filters, so likewise, it will work without these, but these kind of filter the power and stop it from being all noisy between modules you interconnect in the module modular and this is kind of a standard in Eurorack having these 10 UF capacitors uh, connected up. Next to it is some three millimeter diodes and then you've got a a SC5611 EWA. This means uh, the it, you can there are ones called SA56. Be careful not to get those because they're the opposite to this. Basically, SA56 is the one where the anode, which is the positive terminal, is shared on all of the LEDs within here. This one, SC, has got the cathode, which is the negative terminal, the ground or whatever, the, just the negative terminal it, uh, connected together. So. That means if you if you wanted to um, use this, you just uh, two middle legs on these are the grounds, so you connect those to ground. The other uh, legs are actually uh, just the LEDs. You just put a power to them, and the LED is away. Next to that is an Arduino. This is in charge of the tuner. If you've got this, um, if you've got this oscillator, it's obviously because you want an oscillator with a tuner. Um, I may make uh, ones without the tuners soon like i said i'm making but i'm trying to release one a month of designs pcb designs so you never know there might be one that doesn't have a tuner depending if people don't want tuners i just think the tuners are pretty important especially when you're getting this pan on down here okay so we're going down oh oh yeah 
So here we have the preset potentiometers. Now this is something that um, I, have, ha I have done out of frustration. This one hasn't got any knobs on it. But you'll see here there is a, uh, ooh, I'll get in focus at least. This is a part of the design that I really wanted to it to have. From a DIY standpoint, I find it a little bit frustrating that um, VCOs that usually need quite a bit of calibration with these preset potentiometers have all of them on the back. They're all sitting on the back. And it's like, you have to, in order to calibrate the oscillator, you have to take it out or have it dangling halfway down. And you know, it's just really cumbersome to actually adjust and calibrate VCOs. So I figured, why not just break them out so they're on the front? Three different types. There's two 100Ks. So it's a 100K center note. This is the one that you can adjust where the center, center of the fine tune is. So I aim it to be center C, but it can be whatever you want. This is the reference voltage. We'll talk about that later. Um, the tracking and the high frequency track. This is for the um, the tuning, the scale to be right on the CEM or AS3340 um, chip. We've got four 100K potentiometers. You could get them from Funk or whatever. I still get them from Funk. I buy a lot of them, I've probably, you know. This is the chips. These are the chips that you need and they're sockets. Uh, some people say that sockets are bad but I don't see the point in not having sockets. Some people say over time these come out of their sockets with jiggles, but I've been touring with chips that have been in sockets for God knows how long. And so like even, even like one of the cases fell off the like six foot to the ground onto the uh, floor and they didn't come dislodged. So if I was you, I'd just for the sake of it, use these because there's nothing worse than realizing you've made a mistake and you've accidentally maybe burnt this out because you've wired the power backwards. It happens, it happens, and you can't replace this relatively inexpensive op-amp. It's just frustrating. So, so there's a TLO74, which is a quad op-amp. There's another two op-amps here. Uh, basically, the thing is about these two is they are, if you don't know, the TLO72 and the TLO74, which are very popular within the modular synth community. I think it's because, you know, everybody's just um, reading from the same same book and watching the same videos. But, you know, they're a go-to op amp. And the operational amplifiers are in various parts of synthesizer circuits. So these are doing um, different jobs. And basically you just choose how many and what kind of layout of op amp package you have compared to how many op amps you have. So if this design had eight op amps, for instance, you just have two of these, you know. If it only had one op amp, there's a TLO71, which is just a one, it looks the same, but it's just one op amp instead of two or four. And then there's the AS3340. This is the chip where it's all based around. This is the thing that kind of makes makes a, a DIY oscillator attractive to me because all of the complicated parts, for instance, the uh, temperature compensation and such like that is inside the actual chip. So you don't have to worry about all that crap. 7805, this is, I a lot of people are like, Sir, why don't you use the smaller version of this? I don't know, I just like the way these look. LM4040AIZ is a, it's like a precision version of the 7805. The reason I've got both of these is because this one is offering circuit protection for the Arduino. Arguably you don't need it because the Arduino has one, but sometimes with cheap Arduinos, they burn out because if you have 12 volts going into them. So I like to add an extra voltage regulator. But this one um, is basically the thing that will give you the voltage reference. It's the, it was suggested to me by somebody who commented on a video a while back. Thank you very much. I wish I, I'm very sorry, I, I'm, I, I cannot remember the names, but if you think you've done, you did that, then please suggest it to me. I read a lot of, about this one. There are different types of, of these, and I need to 100% remember, but there's this AIZ, uh, I can't remember exactly uh, which one, but there's a, there's a couple of different letters of ones that aren't as good as this, but they are slightly cheaper. These ones tend to be about three pounds, and it gives you a 4.1. Make sure this is a 4.1, because you can get 2.8, and that's not what we need. 4.1 is the voltage that this gives out within 0.1% uh, at 25 degrees Celsius. This is uh, for the Octave. Two Eurorack style connectors. These are for the power and the link. The, in, in, in hindsight, maybe in the Mark II version, which God knows when it will happen, I may make these two different sizes. 
but I don't think it'll be bad if you plug one accidentally into the other because they're off buffered outputs but whatever just just make sure you remember that one of them's a link and one of I've tried to make it reasonably obvious which ones are which on the back of these jack sockets these make sure that the, the, the PCB board for the back is designed for these ones but uh, there'll be a link for these and these are relatively popular and they are probably the cheapest you can get for this kind of stuff so you know there's no reason to get any different ones 12 pin PCB interconnects are for the uh, connection between the big yellow PCB and the little yellow PCB simples in fact you can get away with using 10 pin the middle 10 pins because the two outside ones so there's four that are connecting to ground so this one's literally 10 and I haven't got a 12 so whatever okay so this uh, requires a little bit of talking about this is the um, this is the rotary switch. Uh, why I went for this kind of rotary switch and why I think it, it needs wires is because, well, it, it was just weighing up the, um, the choices that I had. So basically, initially I started with a rotary switch that you'll see in here. You'll see in here there is a different type of rotary switch and this is a PCB mount rotary switch to mean that you only need one PCB. Uh, the problem with these rotary switches is the cheapest I could find them for was 10 pounds near enough maybe maybe eight pounds or something but to me that kind of that kind of makes pulls this over to being into expensive territory for somebody to build so I decided to go for the cheaper alternative and uh, this the problem with these is they're twice as wide as PCBs so you'd need to stack another PCB on the back which I have not done with this design the reason being is because there's already two PCBs I could have made a PCB that was twice as like long at the back and then a control one but then it's, it, it, it racks up the, the costs again. So I figured it was an easy way of weighing up by literally just six wires going from this and there's a, a label of which ones you want to connect up to what on the actual back of this. There's an arrow saying where the middle one is and then there's the voltage. There's another thing that you must do with these and you've got to remember, you can actually have 12 selections with this, but we don't want 12, we want, uh, how many do we want? Oh yeah, we want five connections. So you come with this and this is a kind of shunt that goes into these things and it kind of stops it at a certain point. So if I make sure this falls into, I think the one, two, three, fourth hole maybe? It might be the fourth or fifth hole. One, two, three, four, five. Well, one, two, three, four. Yeah, five. So you need it to go into the fourth hole, then you pop that on top, and then you bolt it to the to the panel. But also, there's a little bit more prep that you need to do with these things. There's a little blob here. Snip that. Doesn't matter if it's 100% snip, but make sure that's snipped. And then these layer, these are too long, so give that a snip as well. The end's a little bit crusty, but you just put the um, put the knob on top and then screw it in. There's a nice flat point where you put the uh, knob where the screw goes and then you sort it. You can use any knobs but these are the knobs that I use. I've always used these. I've, I've, I quite like the aesthetic of them. Aesthetic? Aesthetic? Whatever you want to say. But this one's quite dented. The screw on with a flat point screwdriver. You use the same screwdriver as you use with these. Sorted. And the link is in the bill of materials for these. Uh, so basically the way up between having this is you sort of lose a bit of rigidity uh, on the PCB around these um, preset potentiometers. So what I've done is I've added a screw at the top to keep the rigidity at the top kind of nice and solid. So when you're adjusting these, they're not going inwards. So it's just a bit of rigidity for the top. And like I said, in a version two, this, this whole design may change a bit. I may end up just making a whole large double-sided PCB board on the back, but um, that will be very much in the future. And yeah, you have the PCB boards and the panel. The panel is the same as what a lot of uh, Eurorack companies do and use um, the same material as the PCBs. The reason why is I've found over time that these are a lot more hard wearing. They don't scratch as much as the metal ones and they're just as rigid and they're just as good plus the metal ones uh, in small quantities like what I'm dealing with are, are relatively pricey and it would up, up the price of these kits by a tenner probably so you don't want that and in the future because I'm trying to keep a standard about this I will have circuits on the panels and that's one thing you can do with these that you can't do with metal is actually have circuits on the, PC, on the panels.